Developing right now, the Republican National Committee has unanimously voted to withdraw from the Commission on Presidential Debates. That commission has overseen the political debating process in the U.S. for decades. RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel released a statement today saying the committee will find, quote, newer, better debate platforms, accusing the CPD of being, quote, biased. This is the latest escalation in a years-long dispute between the RNC and the CPD following grievances leveled by former President Donald Trump. Mr. Trump has accused U.S. presidential debates of being unfair in aspects including format and moderator selections. The commission has yet to respond to the decision. Joining us now for more on this is CBS News political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns. Hi, Caitlin. So what does this action mean for upcoming election debates, including the 2024 presidential election? Because that's really what voters care about, right? That's exactly right. And remember, this commission has to do with general election debates, not with those presidential primary debates. Remember, we had lots and lots of debates throughout the primary process for the Democrats last cycle and in 2016 for both Democrats and Republicans. This is about the general election debates. There are usually three of them with a vice presidential debate. And so that's what the commission oversees. But it's really important to note here that the commission deals directly with the candidates, not with the RNC, not with the DNC directly with the candidates. So uh, the candidates decide whether they want to participate in debates. Now, what uh, the um, RNC has done in announcing this decision is that they said that they are going to require uh, the, candidate, uh, to, the candidates to sign a pledge that they will not participate in a non-sanctioned mm. debate by them. So they are uh, trying to get Republican candidates on board with this. But uh, there is a big question question about what the enforcement mechanism really would be, because, you know, if, if a candidate wants to participate in the debate, uh, that person can do so. So this is really a message from the Republican National Committee about how they see debates, how they see them going forward, and really, um, you know, airing these grievances, as you mentioned, with the process mm -hmm. as it played out in 2020. So, Caitlin, the RNC is saying that it will find, quote, newer and better debate platforms for GOP candidates. Which platforms might this be? How do you think they will try and accomplish this? Well, they didn't explicitly say what the alternative will be, but they did say that they will have their own sanctioned debates. So whether they uh, work something out with the Democratic uh, nominee at the time to, uh, you know, work on a different kind of um, d debate uh, remains to be seen, or if they forego them altogether. Um, it really depends on what the dynamics are at the time and really who the nominee will be, because once you are the nominee, you are the leader of the party. Uh, so that raises some questions as well. Remember, in 2020, um, the debate commission decided that they would uh, turn the second debate into a virtual one. This was after uh, then-President Trump was diagnosed with COVID, and there were concerns about having an in-person debate in light of that diagnosis. Uh, the, the president's campaign scrapped the debate and said they wouldn't participate in that virtual debate. Um, and then they participated in, in the final one. So. Uh, it, remains to be seen kind of what the effect is. But if this holds, that means that we won't have a debate with a nonpartisan entity. This is a commission that was established in 1987. It's designed to be bipartisan, yeah. nonpartisan, I should say. Uh, and so it is really important for American voters to right. have the opportunity to see the candidates in a nonpartisan setting uh, and make their decisions about voting. Yeah, let's hope this doesn't have a chilling effect on debates in general, because as you said, it's a very important piece of the puzzle for American voters. Um, Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.